Hey y'all, I am back with a new what's for dinner. So this was on a Monday and it was the day before Boston's birthday. It was also the last day of the kids Christmas like slash New Year break from school. So since Boston would be in school on his actual birthday, I asked him how he wanted to spend the day and he said that he wanted Chick-fil-A mac and cheese and to go to the movies to watch the new Spider-Man movie. And there they picked out some popcorn and these little like chocolate ice cream bites. And this was on Tuesday, his actual birthday. After we picked the kids up from school we went to my parents house and had him like a little party and he asked for a chocolate Jurassic Park cake he's obsessed with dinosaurs and I asked him what he wanted me to make for his special birthday dinner and he said mommy I just want a cheeseburger happy meal from McDonald's so I wasn't going to argue that and that was our two days of celebrating him so now on to the cooking portion of the video on Wednesday I tried out a new recipe for a cheesy turkey meatball casserole it has been a long time since I have cooked with ground turkey, but we like it pretty good. So I would like to start replacing it with ground beef just every now and then. We do like ground beef better, but just when you want something a little bit lighter. But to this bowl, I've added in about one and a quarter pounds of it, and I added in an egg, and then I'm just seasoning it with onion powder, Italian seasoning, salt and pepper, a good amount of minced garlic, the tiniest amount of cayenne pepper, and crushed red pepper flakes. I didn't want it to be too spicy for the kids, of course course and meatballs is one thing that they do really like so I didn't want to mess it up but I've added in about a half a cup of some shredded mozzarella cheese and then I grated in about a quarter cup of some fresh parmesan cheese so now I'm just going to prepare my bacon dish I'm just going to spray it with some nonstick cooking spray and now that that's ready I can go ahead and mix this mixture together I really dislike mixing together like meatballs or meatloaf. It doesn't gross me out anymore, but it just freezes my hands off. But anyways, I'm just going to get these shaped into meatballs. Since they don't have breadcrumbs or anything like that in them, they are a little bit like mushy, but it's not like unmanageable or anything like that. But I couldn't get those all fit into that one dish, so I did have to pull out a little mini one. But those are just going to go in the oven at 400 degrees for about 15 minutes. So as you can see, they are sitting in like a lot of liquid. Some of that cheese is starting to kind of ooze out a little bit. So what I did is I took my tongs and just removed the meatballs to a separate plate. So then I could drain off all of that like grease. And then I just took a paper towel and wiped it out. And that worked really well. Didn't take no time at all. So now that they have shrunk, I could fit them all back into this bacon dish. And now I'm just covering them with some spaghetti sauce. I'm doing some prego. That is one of our favorites. I'm pretty picky when it comes to spaghetti sauce. Um, but you could also do like Alfredo sauce. Uh, maybe pesto. I think even barbecue sauce would be really good with it. So just whatever sauce you feel like doing. But I topped it with a little bit more mozzarella cheese and I popped that back in the oven for about five more minutes just to warm up that sauce and to melt the cheese. Now this is optional of course but I did top it with some dried parsley mainly just for some color and this is technically like a low carb recipe but I didn't make it with that intention. Um, we actually just served it over some spaghetti. Spaghetti and meatballs is one of my kids favorite meals so they were super happy and I just served it with a side of asparagus and now that it is a new year and more people are willing to try new veggies and just try to incorporate them more into their diet I figured I could quickly show you how I prepare my asparagus it is one of my absolute favorite vegetables I make it pretty often and it's been a while since I've showed it so the way I do it is I wash it with that like bottom rubber band on just to keep it together it makes it quicker and I just give it a little shake to get off the excess water and then I chop it right above the rubber band because the bottoms are like unedible and I toss those away and add that to a pan and add in one cup of water. Then I add on a lid and I turn my stove onto the high setting and as soon as I set that temperature to high I set a timer for anywhere from four to six minutes depending on the thickness of it. So for this I did four minutes and basically you're just steaming it. And then I remove the excess water and I add in just a little bit of butter and I like to season mine with some garlic salt and pepper and that is it. I just saute that in the butter and seasonings for like a minute, maybe a little bit less and that is literally it. Um, a lot of people like to top it with some Parmesan cheese but this is actually the one thing that I don't need cheese with even though I'm sure it's really good but it's so good. I can't say that I've ever served asparagus with spaghetti, but I am not mad about it. And those turkey meatballs turned out really good. We really loved how they were seasoned. They were seasoned very well, and we love that little tiny pinch of heat. 
We had our first big snow day of the season, and this was a really chaotic day. My husband is a truck driver, and since the road conditions were terrible, there were so many wrecks, and him, as well as so many other people I know, including my dad, were stuck on the highway all day long, unable to move. I mean, several hours. It was awful, but I knew that when he did finally walk through those doors, I wanted him to have something really hearty and good, so I figured a pot roast would be perfect. So, I started by searing my chuck roast in my cast iron pan with a little bit of oil. I placed it seasoned side down um, and I'm seasoning it just with some sea salt and some freshly cracked black pepper. And I did sear each side for about three minutes per side, I'd say. And you're just looking for that nice crust. And, you know, searing it before adding it to a crock pot does add a lot more flavor and I feel like it makes it a little bit more juicy. So now that I placed that in my crock pot, I'm going to add in my veggies. I just did some like baby red potatoes that I washed and cut in half, as well as some carrots that I just peeled and chopped into big pieces. So for the seasonings, I'm going to do a packet of ranch seasoning and a packet of brown gravy. So basically I'm kind of following that popular like three packet roast recipe that's all over Pinterest, but I just left out the Italian seasoning dressing packet whatever it is uh, but yeah I just mix that together and place that all over the veggies and I added in a half a cup of water and then put my lid on and I cooked it on low for eight hours now I did end up having to add in one more cup of water so all together I did use one and a half cups of water because when I went to check it close to the end of the cooking time those veggies were just not getting done to my liking but adding in the extra cup definitely helped so here it is um, the meat was perfectly tender and the veggies were perfectly tender as well so what I did is I ended up taking the meat out, placing it in a separate bowl, did the same thing with the veggies, and I covered that with tinfoil to keep in the heat. So I wanted to thicken up this sauce to make more of a gravy, so I did that with a cornstarch slurry. I had to stir it for a good while because it was wanting to clump up. I don't know that I've ever done it this way, but I was just kind of experimenting. But yeah, I ended up turning that on high and I let that go on with the lid for like 20 minutes. So then I added it to this gravy boat and it did help thicken it up a little bit, but not like significantly. If you wanted it to be thicker, you could always do it on the stove. Boiling it will definitely help thicken it, but I thought it was a pretty decent consistency. So there's my bowl. I have the meat and veggies covered in that really flavorful, delicious gravy, and it is served with a buttered roll. This was the perfect way to end a super cold and nerve-wracking winter day. The next day, we had the leftover pot roast for lunch, so we wanted a lighter dinner, and breakfast for dinner is always a favorite, so I just scrambled up some eggs and fried up some bacon. This right brand is our absolute favorite. It's so good. Um, it is a little bit pricey, though, so I only buy it when it's on sale. I also cut up that fresh pineapple, and I wanted to share about these bagels because these are the best bagels I have ever tried. These are the double cheese ones by Sam's Choice, and I buy them at Walmart. I will say though, they do mold quickly. So if you don't plan on using them within a few days, definitely pop those in the freezer. So here is my plate after I toasted up the bagel. I did one side with half of an avocado and I have been loving topping my avocado with this salad supreme seasoning. If you've been with me for a while, you know that I was looking super hard for that seasoning over the summer, but it was sold out. But I finally got my hands on it and I've been loving it. On the cream cheese side, I've been loving using this Asiago everything bagel seasoning. Super good. Bagels and cream cheese is just one of those foods that I could probably eat every day and not get sick of. It is definitely one of my like all-time favorite foods. But yeah, I love quick and easy nights like that. The next night was also very simple. We have been craving just like a big salad and we wanted to top it with this chicken. If you have never tried the Tyson blackened chicken strips, they are seriously so good. I have never been like a big frozen chicken person, but anytime I see these, I will grab them every time. I like to cook them up in the air fryer and I cook them at 400 degrees, anywhere from 10 to 12 minutes. And this is the lettuce that I'll be using. I'm gonna wash it and chop it and I'm just gonna go ahead and build it.
As you can see, this is a massive salad. So it was super filling and I love adding that lemon pepper seasoning to my veggies. It just ties everything together in my opinion. I did drizzle some of this Bolt House Farms ranch dressing over it. When I first started buying this, it took me a while to get used to it, but I actually really do enjoy it now. And I felt amazing the rest of the day after having this. Now on to the last meal in this video. I tried out a new recipe that I have been eyeing for a while now. It's like a lemon garlicky creamy pasta. So I've got some penne noodles, two cups of half and half, minced garlic, two tablespoons of flour, and two tablespoons of butter. I'm going to be shredding up some Parmesan cheese. I have one lemon that I'll be using the zest of and some of the juice, some dried parsley, and some salt and pepper. With a sauce like this that comes together really quick, I definitely recommend setting out all of your ingredients prior or else it'll just be complete chaos. I've done it way too many times. But you're just going to melt down that butter and add in a big spoonful of minced garlic. Cook it down for about a minute and then you'll dump in the flour. I just whisk that together until it forms like a paste and I cook it for about two minutes just to cook out the flour. Then I'm going to slowly start pouring in that half and half while stirring it at the same time. At this point, I did reduce my heat down a little bit and it pretty much instantly started to simmer. So within two minutes, my sauce had thickened really nicely. So now I can go ahead and season it. So I'm gonna season it to taste with some sea salt and freshly cracked black pepper. Then I'm going to dump in my lemon zest as well as the juice of half of the lemon. You could add more if you wanted to, but I thought this amount was just right. Also dumped in about a third of a cup of that Parmesan cheese and that instantly like melt it beautifully into the sauce. Then I added in my cooked and drained pasta. I did use half of that box, so about eight ounces. And I just loved the consistency of this sauce. It was perfectly thick and cheesy. Um, as I mentioned in previous videos, we like like really creamy and saucy pastas and some people like to hate on that, but I don't care. I don't want a dry pasta. That's just our personal preference. Um, but now I'm just adding some dried parsley again, pretty much just for some color. And that was it. This cooked really quick. It was really easy to throw together and very minimal ingredients. And y'all, this was absolutely delicious. I was a little bit nervous about it. It sounded a little odd, but it was like a lemon Alfredo sauce. I swear it was so good. And I just served it with some roasted broccoli that I tossed in olive oil, garlic powder, salt and pepper, and I roasted it at 425 for 10 minutes. I topped my pasta with some extra Parmesan cheese and leftover lemon zest and y'all this is a definite must make if you try this out for the first time definitely let me know what you think about it it would also be really good with like some grilled chicken on top but I wanted to try to keep it meatless but that is going to wrap up this video I hope that you found at least one thing that maybe you'd like to try um, as always thank you so much for watching I hope that you all have an amazing week and I'll see you in my next video bye guys